Hello my precious friends, I really hope that you are doing great. Welcome to today's class. It is our third lesson on the fifth topic of Home 4 which is called Electromagnetic Induction. As usual, let me commence by giving the quote of the day which states that the problem is not the problem. Rather, the problem is our attitude towards the problem. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So today we are looking at mutual induction whereby we are saying that mutual induction occurs when a change in current in one coil induces a current in another coil which is placed closer to it. For example, you can see we have our two coils here which are being placed closer to each other. So we expect some the primary coil or the uh, that is the primary circuit to induce some EMF or some uh, current in the secondary coil. So the coil or the circuit that induces the EMF, remember in this chapter we said that EMF is used interchangeably with uh, the induced uh, current. So we can talk of the induced EMF or the induced current. We simply mean the same thing in this particular chapter. So the coil or the circuit that induces the EMF is called the primary coil or the primary circuit. So remember the primary circuit will always have a source of power. For example, you can see we have our cell here, which is our source of power. So this is our primary coil. Then it also has a, a rheostat to regulate maybe the amount of voltage or current flowing through that particular uh, circuit. While the coil or the circuit where EMF is induced is called the secondary coil or the secondary circuit. So this is our secondary coil or the secondary circuit. So in the secondary circuit, we have the galvanometer to indicate, to deflect so as to indicate maybe the presence of current which is being induced. So the primary coil will always have the source of power then the secondary coil will always have uh, an instrument to detect or to show presence of the induced current. So the change in the flux in the primary coil can be brought about by switching on and off of the circuit. So if you want some EMF or some current to be induced, you will simply be switching on and off this particular uh, source of power so that remember a conductor carrying current has a magnetic field around it. That is what we said under a given topic in form 2 work which was called magnetic effect of an electric current. In case maybe uh, you didn't get the topic, you can just review that chapter under form 2. We covered it in this particular uh, channel. It is called a magnetic effect of an electric current. So in that chapter we said that whenever a conductor has some current, is carrying current, it usually has a magnetic field around it. So because this particular uh, primary coil has some current, of course, which is coming from this particular cell, because when you close this particular switch, actually the current is going to flow this through this particular coil. So if the coil is having current, it means that it has some magnetic field around it, that a conductor carrying current has a magnetic field around it. So when you switch on and off this particular circuit, that particular, uh, the EMF, or the that is the magnetic field, around that particular conductor is going to interact with the conductor at right angles. Therefore, we expect some EMF to be induced, that is, in the secondary coil. So the change, you can be asked to state how you can bring about the change in the magnetic flux. So the change in the flux in the primary coil can be brought about by switching on and off the current because that particular uh, conductor, which is the primary coil, which is carrying some current, has a magnetic field around it, which of course is linked to this particular secondary coil. So when you switch on and off the current, actually you are going to create what we call a change in the flux, which will lead to induction of current in this particular secondary coil. So that the induced current will be uh, observed by the deflection of the galvanometer. So the galvanometer will, will be able to tell us whether some current is being induced or not, of course, by either deflecting to the right or to the left depending with the direction of that particular current. Then we are saying that the induced current in the secondary coil can be increased by one winding the coil on a soft iron rod or on a soft iron ring. For example, you can see here we have the primary coil which is a wound on a soft iron ring. The secondary coil is also a wound on a soft iron ring. Similarly, we also have the primary coil being wound on a soft iron rod. So these are soft iron rod. Then we also have the secondary coil being wound on the, uh, that is on a soft iron rod. Now the question is, 
why is it important or why is it advantageous to uh, wind both coils either on a soft iron ring or on a soft iron rod. So the reason is very simple. Remember, this is a process that is involving uh, the change of magnetic flux. Therefore, we need to have a conductor that can easily be magnetized and demagnetized. Remember, under the first topic of Form 2 work, that is magnetism, we did differentiate between soft and hard magnetic materials, whereby we said that a soft ion is an example of a soft magnetic material which can either which can easily be magnetized and demagnetized but for something like steel which is a hard magnetic material it is difficult to magnetize but it also retains the magnetism for a long period of time so because this is a mutual induction which involves the change of magnetic flux in order for the emf to be induced we need a material that can easily be magnetized and demagnetized so uh, the induced current or the induced EMF in the secondary coil can be increased by winding the coils on a soft iron rod or on a soft iron ring. The reason being, the soft iron rod or the soft iron ring is a soft magnetic material and therefore it gets magnetized and demagnetized easily, hence uh, making the process of mutual induction or the change of magnetic flux to be efficient. Then. It also helps to concentrate the magnetic field lines in the secondary coil. For example, you can see in this particular case, when you wind them on a soft iron ring, it actually concentrates the magnetic uh, fields between the secondary coil and the primary coil. And that will simply mean that the stronger the magnetic field, of course, the more the induced current. So it can also be increased by, that is, you can also increase the induced EMF or the induced current by increasing the number of turns in the secondary coil so for example you can see this primary coil has about only two turns but the secondary coil has about one two three four about four turns so if you want to increase the emf uh, in the secondary coil you simply uh, increase the number of turns in the secondary coil as compared to the primary coil you can also see uh, similarly here we also have only about two turns in the primary coil but in the secondary coil we have about one two, three, four. We have about four turns. So the more the number of turns in the secondary coil, the more the induced EMF or the more the induced current. Remember, the purpose of the rheostat is simply to uh, vary the amount of uh, current or the amount of voltage being supplied. Because remember, it involves switching on and off. Therefore, to determine the amount of EMF that wants to be induced in the secondary coil, you can set it using your rheostat, which will determine the amount of voltage to be allowed to pass through the primary coil or the current to be allowed to pass through the primary coil in order for it to induce some EMF in the secondary coil. So whenever we have a changing current in one coil, for example, in the primary coil, inducing a current in another coil, which is the secondary coil, then that is what we call mutual induction. Next, we look at applications of electromagnetic induction and the first application is in transformers. So what is a transformer? A transformer is an electrical device that transfers electrical energy from one circuit to another by means of electromagnetic induction between coils which are magnetically linked. Remember the circuit where electrical energy is transferred from, that is what we call the primary coil or the primary circuit, then the circuit where electrical energy is transferred to, that is what we call the secondary coil or the secondary uh, circuit. Then transformers work on the principle of mutual induction. Then also uh, transformers, uh, they work on alternating current and not on direct current. The reason being alternating current changes and produces the change in the current necessary for mutual induction between the primary and the secondary coil to take Place. Remember, because transformers work on mutual induction, then mutual induction requires that uh, uh, the current in the primary coil should be changed. Uh, that is, it should be changing. That is why we were switching on and off that particular circuit so that to produce a changing current. So the changing current will facilitate the process of mutual induction. That means if you use direct current in transformers, actually electrical energy will not be transferred from the primary coil to the secondary coil because mutual induction can only take place if there is a change in current between that is in the primary coil so that uh, 
that particular current or EMF will be induced to the secondary coil. Remember, direct current is usually steady, therefore it does not change. Therefore, if you use direct current, mutual induction will not take place. Hence, the transformer will not transfer the electrical energy or it will not induce the EMF from the primary coil to the secondary coil. Now, there are two types of transformers. One is what we call the step-up transformer. Then two, we have what we call the step-down transformer. So we differentiate the two types of transformers based on the number of turns in the secondary coil in comparison with the primary coil. Then we also differentiate them based on the output EMF or the output voltage or the output uh, current that is produced. So step-up transformers usually increases the output EMF. So that one simply means that the EMF or the induced current in the secondary coil will be more than the current or the EMF in the primary coil. That is for the, uh, for the case of step-up transformer. Remember that step-up transformers have fewer number of turns in the primary coil. So it has more turns in the secondary coil than in the primary coil. So you can see our primary coil has about one turn. Then the secondary coil has about three turns. So this type of transformer is called a step-up because it has fewer number of turns in the primary coil in comparison to the secondary coil. So that one simply means that the secondary coil will always have more EMF or the output EMF is more as compared to the EMF that will be in the primary coil. Remember the primary coil, coil usually has uh, the source of power. But for the case of step-up transformer, the EMF that will be induced in the secondary coil because it has more turns will always be more than the EMF that is in the primary coil. So in an electrical circuit, this is how we represent a transformer. That is the step-up transformer. So if you see this simple, it simply represents the step-up transformer. So you can see it has fewer turns. That is only one turn in the primary coil. Then it has more number of turns in the secondary coil, which are about, which are about one, two, three. Then we look at the step-down transformer, which is just the opposite of step-up transformer. So step-down transformer, that is transformers reduces the output voltage. So this one simply means that the voltage or the EMF in the secondary coil is fewer than the EMF or the voltage in the primary coil. That is for the case of step-down transformer. That is why it is called a step-down. It is reducing the voltage. The voltage was more in the primary coil, but the voltage will be less or smaller in the secondary coil. So it has more turns in the primary coil than the secondary coil. For example, you can see we have about one, two, three turns in the primary coil, but in the secondary coil, we only have about two turns. Therefore, also the EMF that will be induced in the secondary coil will be more as compared to the EMF that was in the primary coil. Remember, the primary coil is always connected to a source of power, which can be a battery or maybe a given number of cells. So in an electrical circuit, this is how we represent a step-down transformer. You can see it has more turns in the primary coil as compared to the secondary coil. So it has about one, two, three turns in the primary coil and fewer turns in the secondary coil of about only one turn. So we've come to the end of our class today, but we need to discuss the quote of the day. The quote of the day stated that the problem is not the problem. Rather, the problem is our attitude towards the problem. So the quote is warning us against blaming the problem. It is rather encouraging us to take responsibility for our decisions that led to that particular problem. The quote is also encouraging us to have a positive attitude towards our challenges and problems in life because those challenges and problems are meant to teach us important lessons that will be helpful in our next seasons of life. Therefore, instead of asking why always me, that is why is this particular problem always happening to me, instead you should ask why not me or ask what can I do about that particular problem. And lastly recall that a negative attitude is like a car tire without air. That is, you won't get anywhere uh, until you change it. Thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson. I do not take it for granted. In case you are new to the channel, kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you'll get notified. Until next time, this is Kind Tuition Academy. Thank you very much.